Okay. I'm going to talk about the Snyder Cut, I guess. I have properly uh, pillar boxed myself in the spirit of the Snyder Cut. Uh, I didn't think the first one was good, but I will admit I kind of, because I really didn't like the previous Snyder films, I kind of thought like, well, Whedon must have made this better. God, imagine what it would have been like otherwise. And that's not really right. Um, I'd say Whedon's version isn't better, but... I don't know that the Snyder Cut's better either because it's way, way too long and I almost feel like it would have been better if they cut it up into a series or something. I don't know what, but um, I don't know what would have helped it. I watched it with a few friends and we kind of made fun of it because we're not Snyder Cut guys and God help me if Snyder Cut guys find this, no offense. But, um, yeah, I mean, you you gotta know, right? Right, guys? You gotta know. You're a little, you're a little into it, which is okay, but maybe, maybe uh, peel back a little. I don't know. So, um, right, this movie, uh, the first thing that happens, like, I just immediately was almost, like, laughing at, like, it opens up and Superman yells and it's like the death of superman and they're trying to do it nice and serious and there's a really bad composition of uh lex luther in the water and they're trying to be like oh superman's dying it's serious and he yells i don't really remember it from batman v superman but he yells and it sends out these multiple shock waves right and it's almost like I was explaining it to my one friend, and I'm like, it's almost like a Simpsons sketch. It's like Homer's like at the air show, and he gets in the super fast plane, and of course he fumbles, and he turns it off, and we cut to an in compact, uh, in a cockpit scene of him trying to fix it. He goes, ah! right, and then we would cut outside and show the plane going over China. It would be like, ah! and then it goes over Russia, be like. Ah! That's kind of what the opening is. It's following Superman's like death now, but because it's um, like a wall of sound, you just hear ah, like ah, 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 and it's <laughs> it's so weird. It's oh god, it was such a weird opening, and I get what they were trying to do. They were oh, the mother box awakened because the Kryptonian was dead which it knew even though the mother box had been here for like 5,000 years before Superman, but I don't really care if things make sense in a comic book movie particularly, so it's at least a reason for the mother box to wake up. There would have been a better reason, probably, but it's as good as anything. And, um, you know, then there's like the... One thing that's weird is like the reshoots were so close to what Snyder shot is um, I actually thought they, like, we didn't use the original Snyder shots because I'm watching this, like, the Aquaman scene, and I'm like, oh, that's weird. They do the same thing, but they cut out the singing. And I just thought that's all he cut out, but apparently he reshot the entire thing because uh, people did side by side. I'm not so acquainted with Ben Affleck's face that I noticed the difference until the end of the movie where it's obvious um so it was really weird because i the whole time i was thinking like well what's the point it, it looks like we didn't use most of snyder's footage and apparently he didn't um i don't really want to speak about this forever so i guess i'll stop going scene for scene but um yeah, i did like whedon's opening a little better but besides that like it's hard to say anything about it was better the you know the Snyder Cut is funnier than you would think it's not like super depressing or anything I would say if you're gonna watch it definitely either watch it with friends to kind of razz on it a little because there are I know everyone thinks it's a masterpiece but there are stupid really funny and stupid things in it here and there um, I 
liked some of that stuff. I liked all the cyborg stuff uh, mostly. I think everything goes on too long. I think it's very whatever you'd call it, self-indulgent. I don't know if that's the right word. I just think it's long. I think this is what happens when you have a guy and he's not limited. Though, on the other hand, the original Justice League is what you have when you have a studio that's not limited because they're just like, we got to make Avengers. We got to do Avengers. And they cut it to ribbons. Um, I think all the superhero violence was really weird. I felt really weird and creeped out when Gal Gadot like drops in and uses her superhuman strength to and they're bad guys fine but she uses her superhuman strength to basically kill uh 10 people whom she could presumably have uh handled non-violently it makes a question why she doesn't use her sword and gut people. Why doesn't she have a gun? If all she's going to do is kill people, why not? I mean, think about it. Wonder Woman with a gun. She'd be able to shoot it really fast. And so she kills all these people. And then she vaporizes the one guy. And then the little girl's like, can I be like you one day? And it's like, I'm sorry. That's not how kids would react to seeing, even though they're bad guys, children wouldn't sit there and watch this traumatic scene. Fucking the guy's brains are dripping down the wall. It's like, can I be like you one day? Wonder woman. And well, you can't No, because she's got superpowers. Unless, you know, your father's Zeus too. So that was weird to me. And, uh, from there, like, it stays in that kind of dark tone. It doesn't get as violent. Like, the, to me, it's like the parademons, like, be violent. The parademons are like monster things, so I don't mind that. And that's mostly what they're fighting the whole movie. They're not just murdering um, some weird, like, the Heaven Gates guys with a bomb. You know, it's like these guys are a cult. Do, do we have to murder them? I don't know. Whatever. But that's Zack Snyder loves the idea of superpowered people murdering um, civilians. So then we, you know, keep going with the movie. And there are a lot of, like, to me, unnecessary scenes. I think that's what really got me is, like, the weird scene of, like, oh, we're going to have Alfred interact with Diana. And, like, he doesn't like the way she's making tea. Because that's what British people do. And... You know, they're not all bad, but some of them are just so, like, well, Superman comes in the black suit, and he's got the black suit, because he's got the black suit. We have black suit Superman, even though it means nothing. It's just in there to say, well, Superman wore a black suit. It's the same thing as, like, well, Batman says fuck. Ooh. And it's not until the very end in freaking reshot stuff, you know, and it's just to promise this thing to people who no offense soy face at the idea of superman in a black suit but it doesn't mean anything he just that's i guess superman has a bunch of different suits because they knew he'd be super so they put them all on his ship it's more like a comic scene he copied from a comic where like superman's established where it's like in this universe what superman's been around for like a year and a half and he has all the freaking different outfits he had to sell toys in the cartoon whatever um losing my thread here i i it just was way too long for me i i think the best thing would have been to recut it into something more watchable because you just have these scenes which are weird and run too long and i don't know they're just not great uh to me and i did like the cyborg stuff i like where he runs he goes into the virtual world and he, like the lady doesn't have much money and takes the little amount of money who pulls it up and he increases the money i would have liked more of that honestly i would have would have almost liked if they just took uh took him took ray fisher and said like hey why why don't we just try to make a standalone thing or something like if they had 
come up with something more to do with this footage than kind of have him in there um, to pull apart boxes at the end. Even though that's a good scene. And the stuff with the Flash is way better. It's They cut really good stuff. Like the, the first scene with the Flash is great. But that's what it comes down to. Um, like most comic book movies, you pick out a collection of scenes you liked. And you're like, I like this. I like that. And it kind of stops there. And that's the funny thing on Twitter. You go on the Snyderverse hashtag. And it's just people being like... What a shot, what a shot. And it's, you know, it's someone in front of a green screen. It's not a shot. It's not a shot. It's someone in front of a green screen with computer graphics. Though that person is nowhere in the world doing that. Or they're on some wires, you know, and it's like, what a shot. It's not a shot. And I'm not some kind of film snob at all, but words, you know, they, words have some meaning. And, um, you know, I wouldn't say it's terrible. It's not like Wonder Woman 84 or something like that where it just sucks. But it does run long, and if you want to watch it in one sitting, probably like me, unless you're really into this stuff, if you do one sitting, it's going to probably Im impact your opinion of it because it's not, it's not good in one sitting. It is not like... Um, Blade Runner, it's not something where you don't feel the length, you know? You feel the length. Like, this is a four-hour movie, and you feel it. Um, I do think, uh, I think definitely this vindicates him, though, that he, he was right. He had a, he had a cut, and it was, it's good. It's not bad that's for sure not in the same way some of this stuff is bad but so many of the scenes just are unnecessary and run long and i'm just kind of scrolling through here and uh cyborg every time i see cyborg in the cg uh i think the hoodie looked great i feel like they could have just put that guy in a hoodie put some metal over his face and stuck a LED in the middle of the hoodie and been done with it. And then at the end, oh, he has it. And he could just be punching people in the hoodie, just like Batman's in his outfit. Oh, it's Cyborg, you know, whatever. He's afraid of his appearance or whatever. Make it a plot point. And then at the end, he takes off the hoodie and you see this kind of like monstrous weird body which is what they wanted they didn't want like cool sleek cyborg they wanted like monstrous scary alien cyborg which i don't even mind but it, it looks bad every time i saw it i just laughed uh because the the cg is not very very good it's like cyborg does not look very good um i'll try to mute this there we go alternatively steppenwolf looks better there are also there are a lot of scenes of like steppenwolf like mugging into the camera like doing this like, like they modeled him after a fucking like pug or something it's so annoying because i know you're trying to make me empathize with him and you kind of do but they go so overboard with it whereas they don't develop anything about the character that, that you like or can relate with like oh he's got this kind of drive or he was raised that way or whatever it's just he really wants dark side's approval he makes a sad puppy face when he doesn't get it and it's like that's pretty much it for him and then the ending is like uh the and you know a lot of the stuff that you kind of i think people credited whedon with was snyder and a lot of the good stuff, the good memorable stuff from uh, the original release was Snyder. So you got to give him credit. And um, and then you have the like ending, which is good. I kind of, I'll admit I'm a dork. I really liked the thing where Flash saves the truck and Superman saves the whole apartment complex, even though it made no sense because... Again, it's a comic book movie, but the ending, like when they, pff, spoilers, 
die literally dissect Steppenwolf. It's pretty cool. I gotta admit, like, it's a pretty cool bit of movie violence. Um, even though Gal Gadot's looking at the wrong place, uh, <laughs> she's just looking at the wrong thing. She doesn't know where the 3D gauge is supposed to be. Oh, and there's some William Defoe is in it for some fucking reason. <laughs> he gets to give Aquaman his trident, and you'll have a lot of scenes like that where you're like, "Why the fuck's William Defoe here?" Oh well, because he has to give Aquaman his trident. And the after, I mean, I call it after credit because it was shot later because uh, Ben Affleck doesn't look the same. I when I first saw him out of the mask, I didn't notice in the mask, but when I saw him out of the mask, I didn't realize it was the same actor. I thought it was some different actor uh, when when he meets Martian Manhunter. And Martian Manhunter's really like weird and like it's weird and tacked on. I almost wonder if that was something they did for the Snyder cut because you go to that scene where um Lois and Lois talks to uh, Martha, and then it's like, okay, hey, Lois, get your ass back in the office, attaboy, and, you know, and then we end scene, right? Do we end scene? I'm just watching it right now. We end scene, we cut, and then it cuts to the hallway. It makes me wonder if that was a reshoot where, because it's really, it's really weird where it just, it undercuts the whole meaning of it is that Martha is supposed to be, who knows Lois, who's friends with her, gives her this talk to be like, you gotta, you gotta get over it. I really would like more of these movies to have that because like I'm tired of big superhero grief shit i'm just so sick of it it's like people die every day and it's something everyone experiences and superheroes should get over it a little faster so and then it cuts and then it's like oh it wasn't martha it was martian manhunter he changes to martian manhunter and then he changes to whatever his alternate identity from one of the earlier movies and it's just to have him in there and I feel like that was tacked on. They were like, well, we could, where can we put him? Where can we put him? We can't do too much. Oh, sorry, my phone. And, you know, you can't really fault him, I guess. You know, this is probably one of the best Snyder comic book movies. I'll give you that. But um, the, the reshoots, the Joker stuff is just embarrassing to me. I do not understand the people who are like, wow, this shows you how great Leto is. It's so amazing. And, like, it's really weird because they, like, teased that we live in a society thing and then cut it out. And now, oh, well, the, the we live... I hope my mic isn't poppy. The, oh, we live in a society scene. That's, um... That's gonna be in the, uh... Gray cut. Oh, we have many more cuts or you get little bits, little bits like, you know, like how alt indie bands would press a brown vinyl or a red vinyl with one extra song. Like, I really hope these Snyderverse people realize they're kind of being taken for a ride. I think this was fine. Um, I did think they were being taken for a ride with this, but I think this was fine. It's a good even in the realm of comic book movies, maybe middling. I don't know what I think about it, frankly, but I do think a gray cut, a widescreen cut, if they're going to keep doing this and adding a little more Jared Leto mugging for the camera, trying to pretend he's Mark Hamill, like you got to yeah, I get real, you know, because that's that was that scene was not great. And, um, well, that's pretty much it. I just had to record something, get it out of my brain, as it were. Um, I think if you, you loved the movie, fine. Um, I think if you hated it, fine. 
But if you think the Whedon one was better, I think I think you're wrong. You're probably wrong. You know, this was not so bad. But certainly, I'd say watch it like it was a TV series. Don't go through the full four hours. Watch a chapter. If you want to watch a second chapter, do it. But take it like a take it like a mini series. You, know, you don't wanna you don't wanna binge it. I don't think. All right. Well, that's it for me.